He never missed an opportunity to honor his parents. To me, he was a perfect mix of his father's jovial personality and he most firm, but even tempered spirit. The militant side of Peter came out in his music, in my opinion, because he didn't play when he was sharing his message. He was a professional, on time for his show, never compromising his sound, focused. It's funny because most of my favorite songs are not even the Morgan Heritage songs that everybody knows. I think that um, when Oliver talked about Peter being one of the greatest vocalists, I don't think that so many of us have even heard his range. Peter used to say that um, he was very mindful of the songs that he released because he didn't want to confuse people as a singer of Morgan Heritage, right? But he was a professional. He was where he needed to be and he committed to it. He fulfilled anything that he committed to. Quiet, but when he went on stage, he came alive. As a lyricist, <laughs> I think there's so many people that have benefited from the lyrical genius of Peter Morgan. Again, his range. <laughs> and when we talk about militants, when it came to his family, <laughs> another side came out of Peter. He was extremely protective and private. Grandpa, mommy, Lugi, Mojo. <laughs> As much as he needs to fuss and cuss. That's how you know Peter love me and I'm cuss you. <laughs> Who running late? Who's supposed to do this? Who have the itinerary? He was a glue. I promise. Mojo. I promise that I'm going to help Mojo with the farm because I don't want Peter to come for me. And I'm going to continue to love your family as my own. Getting used to seeing Peter with his other siblings outside of Morgan Heritage, outside of LMS. For me, the only word I could find was freeing. Seeing him with his head. Even Miriam. It was like he came alive. His ability to just celebrate life. I had the privilege of being accepted into his family and was also the beneficiary of his fussing and cussing, second only to Jenny. <laughs> he was a very demanding individual. He said never asked questions. He just told you what he needed to get done. <laughs> Since COVID, and especially in the past two years, I've had the privilege of seeing you be intentional about spending more time with your family, your children, so many more of your siblings. And I can say that in the last two years, I probably even got to see Peter more in family time than I have in the last 20 something years outside of work. <laughs> I'm happy that he got to meet Lenny and he embraced him and showed him so much love. As a father, when I met Peter, at that time it was five, and all he could talk about was all of you. I have seen so many videos and he has shared so many updates. The level of pride that your father has had for all of you is inexplicable. He loved you so much more than he could express. I've been blessed to be the godmother for our baby princess, Gigi. And being able to see Peter evolve as a parent, being able to see him spend time communicating his evolved love is what I call it, with all of you, really, has made my heart overflow. It's fascinating to see so much of him in all of you. Our son.
and Shangri-La. I remember when he called me again, we we're going to the Bahamas, and he said, I'm bringing somebody to meet you. The moment I met you, I knew you were going to be our wife <laughs> and my sister. The only words I could find to say to you are his words. Make me want to give you the world. I've done wrongs before, but I do those things no more. Loving you has made me a better man for sure. You make me complete. You're my better half. You brought out a side of me I never knew I had. I'm giving you the best of my love. I can't see it that you're hurting deep inside. You have a little faith that everything's going to be all right. And that's what, it, that's what love does to you. When it's really true, just break that frown and let your beauty shine through. Jabitz, you are my forever. You are forever my friend. Though in this life, I'll never see you again. You now have your wings and I feel you in my heart straight through. Cause you live, because cause your life never ends. You now fly with angels in the wind. <laughs> There is love and there is love. And there are memories that we hold real deep in our hearts. Thank you, my sister. Christy Barber, could you please come and pay tribute to Mr. Peter Morgan. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Christy Barber, and I'm the sixth member of Morgan Heritage. <laughs> Thought you knew, right? Um, I have been a part of my beautiful music family of Morgan Heritage for over a quarter of a century. Um, we've worked together on so many different things, and I'll never forget the day when I was exposed to their music in the 90s, the record label that I worked at, um, there was an a &R there that's a dear friend of ours, uh, Joel Chin, who I shared an office with, and he was working on some records from them, and I was like, whoa, who is this singer? Like, he's amazing. It blew me away. And I was like, I told Joel, I want to be a part of this project. And what was great about working with him was, is whenever there was something going on that I was super passionate about, he let me hit the ground running, and that's exactly what we did. And it's uh, 28 years later, I've worked with Yuna, Luke's, Mojo, Gramps, and Peter, who anybody knows me knows is one of my favorite singers of all time. And um, amazing things. And we've traveled all over the world together. I mean, in the 90s, when it was so hard to promote a lot of the music, the opportunities that we had working the Don't Have a Dread record, we went from Springfield, Massachusetts to St. Thomas, Jamaica with CBS Sunday morning because the producers couldn't believe how many kids pops had. And they just wanted to make sure that they had it on CBS to let the world know. On a Father's Day special, it was amazing. And we played parties for Johnny Cash, CBS, the Special Olympics with Bon Jovi and Stevie Wonder, you name it, the royal family of reggae has done it. And it was always a goal of mine and a big goal of theirs. And it makes me so proud to be able to say Grammy winning Morgan Heritage because it took a long time to get there. I remember the night it happened, I was in London and I stayed up all night and I was in the hotel room and I'm pretty, think, pretty sure the people next door thought I was getting murdered because I screamed so loud. They called me the minute they won backstage in the media room. 
some banging and screaming on the phone. I was like, we did it, girl. We did it. It was so exciting. One of the best moments ever. And then they came to Nashville. We got to celebrate in Nashville. And that was so amazing that I got to see them right off of that win. And then the next nomination, we all went to the Grammys together in New York. So it's just been amazing things. I've been so proud to be a part of this family. Um, each one of them, it, it, they were like my first brothers and sisters in this music industry. And each one of them has their own personality. But the great thing about Peter was, is Peter's one of those artists that no matter what I asked him to do, no matter war, where I told him to go, Peter never, ever, ever gave, he, he put 100% of himself into everything. He never said no. He always did it with a smile. He always did it with dignity. He was professional. He was amazing. And that magnetic smile and his laugh, we miss. And I remember when we would just, the family members would get together and they'd make Peter call me because everybody else like, oh, look at them. They're going to stick the big dog on me because nobody says no to Peter. It's like every time he calls on the phone, I just know I have to be like, I'll do anything for you, you know? So, and they knew it. That's why they'd make Peter call. Um, I, I feel lost. I can't believe that I'm standing here talking about this right now because there was no lovelier friend than Peter Morgan. And I could just tell stories and stories for days. I'll leave you with one last one. I remember, I think we we're in St. Kitts and Peter said um, he was gonna go by PETA. And I was like, PETA? Like a PETA chip? He's like, no, not a PETA chip. And I'm like, well, how do you spell? And he's like, P-E-E-T-A-H. I'm like, oh, like a cheetah. And he was like, no, not like a cheetah. I said, no, like a cheetah. He's like, no, not like a cheetah. Because he knew where my head was going. And from that day forth, his nickname was PETA Cheetah. So every time I see him, it's like, hey, PETA Cheetah, I miss you. I love both of you. You're beautiful. Your family's beautiful. Luke's, Gramps, Mojo, wherever, whenever, however. I will always be there for my Morgan family. So, Peter, keep the block warm for me up there. I know you're going to continue to make music. I know Pops is ready. I know Bobby Digital is up there. He's ready to produce it. Joel will be right by your side. And I know Joe Mercer would love to have a feature. Good evening, guys. <laughs> Right. I remember when I was coming to the United States in the 70s and we had Air Jamaica. They would leave the gate late. And just about when they're going over Cuba, the pilot changed gear and put in turbo and make it to New York on time. So ladies and gentlemen, we're putting in turbo right about now. Okay. <laughs> so bear with us here. And so I'm asking the speakers who are coming up now to Put on turbo, okay? Meaning we, we have to get out of here at a certain time. Mr. Shane Brown, where are you, Shane? Come on, baby boy. Oh, hello, man. Respect to you, sir. Come on now. Good evening, everybody. Family, friends, and loved ones. It's an honor and a privilege for me to stand before you today and pay tribute to Peter Anthony Morgan. He's a very special person to me and a lot of people here today, and a very ir irreplaceable person. I met Peter and Morgan's family some 20, 20 odd years ago in Canada at a concert. Um, the concert featured a number of acts and Gramps, Luke's, Mojo and Yuna called me in the dressing room and said, Yo, when are you going to make such show for me? You remember, Grams? I'm going to say, Tonight, you know. So tell the engineer that he had the night off. <laughs> that night, it was like the first time I really heard Peter's song. 
his voice, his presence on the stage. <laughs> Move and lift my spirit so much that after the show, he said to the Morgan, from this day on, I want to be an engineer, no matter who else I was working for. Gramps? Yeah, man. <sighs> from there, Pete and I developed this friendship that quickly evolved to family. And Pete and I would always have conversations after each show because we have a game during the show where Peter would be singing because I know what I do to his voice. And I would do, it, do the same thing to his voice, even though every night Peter changed up something for me. But I was always I mean, aware of what Peter was going to do. So much so that other members of the group would say to me, yo, I want to know each other so. You know? <laughs> now, Peter for me, wow. I would never mix a song, no matter if it's Morgan or this song, or whoever, without sharing share it with Peter. Because Peter was one of my biggest fans, you know. But yet still, he was my biggest critic. So I was a mix of song and said, Peter, listen to this. And I said, yo, well, I don't know, man. I think you can do a little better, you know? <laughs> I mean, so well, wicked Peter said, no, nah, man, go again. So Peter is responsible for the engineer that I am today. Believe me, Peter had a pair of the best ears that I know. What a man. <clears throat> yeah. So there's our chance to say thank you, Peter. Thank you for the way you brightened our lives. We will all feel cheated, you know, that you're taken away from us so young and so quickly. But yet we must learn to be grateful that you came into our lives and that was such a blessing. Peter, as a producer now, Peter and I would always share ideas, we'd always be writing songs, and any product I'm involved in, Peter was like my ghostwriter. I remember three weeks ago, as, um, while working on an album for Master Griffiths, he said, Peter, Master next and Peter said, what? ready and to show you the man Peter was and how he was for the producer I was um, inspiring people not to give up because I'm a bad day you know, making people know that there's, there's a lot of love in the world to go around. So, um, there's so much love in the world to go around. So don't give up just because today you feel down. There's so much in the world to go around. So don't give up just because today you feel down. And we we must be reminded that yes, we have lost Peter presence as a human being, but his spirit lives on forever. So this room may be filled with tears, but let us not forget the smiles, the laughter, 
and the precious memories that Peter has brought into our lives. Today, I remember Peter and I honor his spirit by saying, Almighty God, thank you. Thank you for blessing us and the world at large for experiencing Peter's unwavering love, his musical gifts you empowered him with, and his invaluable lessons. My family, friends, and co-workers, I beg of you, let us honor this great man by moving forward, being kinder to each other, dreaming a bit bigger, and celebrating life a bit more. Peter's wisdom and his kindness will continue to echo through the hearts, to our hearts, and be a guide on this journey of life. As we gather here today, we find our ocean of emotions. It's not easy to say goodbye, especially to a man like Peter. But today I'm not saying goodbye. Instead I'm saying thank you. Thank you, Peter Anthony Morgan. Your physical presence may be absent, but your spirit lives on. Your love continues to surround us. Your teachings will continue to guide us. Your memories continue to inspire and comfort us. And your legacy continues to shine always. Peter Anthony Morgan, I love and salute you. Good evening. All right, that's what I'm talking about, that love. At this time, two for one is going on. <laughs> Sharon Burke and Judith Budley, two for one today. It's awesome. Come on up and pay tribute to Mr. Good evening, everyone family and friends. In 1994, I was introduced to Morgan Heritage by the renowned patriarch of the family, Denver Morgan. He made me know His Majesty Almighty had chosen me to have Morgan Heritage as my new family, and I was to guide them and protect them and also expose them to Jamaica. Well, that is how my journey started with Morgan Heritage, and I fell instantly in love with Gramps Yuna, Peter. I've always remembered Pe Peter staring at me with those big eyes when we met. I went home that evening and I put on my red, green, and gold tan and said, I'm now a raster. <laughs> I would always remember. When I would have a party, I just needed to invite Morgan Heritage alone because the room would be filled. I didn't need to. <laughs> I'd instantly gained a sister and many brothers that would last for a lifetime. My task was to make them known all over Jamaica, and I was happy this was my group. At that time, I was working on Reggae Sunsplash, and I told them Morgan Heritage had to be on the show. They played the Sunsplash beach party that year. I had heard that the MCA label was signing some acts that had worked on Sunsplash after having flown in to see the performances. Only the best of the best worked on Sunsplash. I quickly worked them on the Sunsplash big stage and the next big thing was that they were signed to MCA records, and then the rest was history. What always struck me about Peter is his calmness and his coolness. Peter always had those beautiful eyes that would captivate anyone. I am sure I'm saying what everybody else, we have lost a gem. His voice was world-class, and as a lead singer, he is comparable with the best in not only reggae, but in any genre. 
Peter has left a big void in our industry, which will be hard to fill. Peter, you are gone, but never will be forgotten. And I miss you. Thank you, everybody. Blessings, bless up, big up. Right at this time, thank you so much. We thank you so much. Mr. Garfield Chin, born. Come on up, my brother. So I kind of spent the last, the last half an hour talking to myself as I was listening to everybody else speak. And I was saying to myself, Don't go up there, go back. When you speak about Morgan heritage and you speak about Peter Morgan, we forget about that great place called Brooklyn. And before I say what I want to say, I want to speak in the language that someone would be speaking in Brooklyn. What do you mean Peter Morgan is gone? What do you mean we're not going to see him again? If I turn on, um, if I turn on my radio, I'm going to hear Peter. If I go on social media, I'm going to see Peter. Peter is not gone. Greatness is something that it's not forgotten. Greatness is something that has to be celebrated. And because I know this, in talking to you today, I don't want to use past tense. So I'm not going to use was. I want to use the word is. Peter Morgan is great. Peter Morgan is a great person. Peter Morgan is greatness. Peter Morgan is a great artist and also a great friend. I know this because I grew up with most of the Morgan Heritage family. We grew up as youth. Rasta youth, does I try to find a way. Lucky for us, we had guidance from some elders that helped us along the way. But along the way was also that mission and that mission of music and all of us wanting to be a place in music that we can be celebrated. Years later, we all did it. I celebrate Morgans every chance that I get because I know the journey. I know the sacrifice. I know the hours we spent just sitting there dreaming about people knowing who we were in the space of music. I celebrate them because we're friends. The only thing that I can, the only word that comes to my mind when I talk about Morgan Heritage and Peter Morgan is proud. I'm proud of what they've accomplished. And I'm also proud of the fact that you guys got to understand the magnitude that not only Peter, but his brothers and sisters means to the music, their art form, their love, not only for the music, but for humanity. Peter was a good dude. And when I say good dude, I mean, I don't think there's anybody in our musical fraternity that can say something bad about Peter. He was just that dude. <laughs> Professionally, people who know Peter would probably call him a humble lion. Humble in his being. He spoke, spoke soft, very calm and very caring. But he was also a lion a lion that roared and he roared his message, a message that was clear, righteousness, black power, black upliftment, mental upliftment, equality, Marcus Garvey, Selassie, Rasta. Our teachings of Rastafari prepared us for this moment. 
we know about the shedding of flesh. We understand it. And we also understand that the most important part of life is your works. Your deeds. The positive impact that you make on humanity. Rastas know life without works is meaningless. So before I go, ask yourself this. Who have you helped? Who are you inspiring on your journey in life? And if the answer to yourself is no one, then please follow the examples of Peter Morgan. He did his work, his work was well done, and therefore his life is meaningful. We know for us all, one bright morning, when our work is over, we shall fly away home. For these few words, I give thanks. Thank you, my brother. Powerful words. If I could sing, I would sing that song, I'll Fly Away, and Peter would say, please be quiet. Ladies and gentlemen, Jamaica has extended all the way to the islands of the South Pacific to an island called Tonga. At this time, I'm very honored to call Miss Anila, 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 Analia Brown. Come on up, my friend. All right. To Morgan Heritage, your legacy has reached every corner of this earth. We bring with us the love of the South Pacific Polynesian Islands to honor today, Pizza Morgan. This is not a dreadlocks thing, divine conception of the heart. You don't have to dread to be right. 
Analia Brown from Tonga, from the island in the South Pacific. Blessings, big up, big up. Come on now. We are all aware of the date we were born and the date that has been appointed for us to die. And in between those two dates, there's a dash. And it's up to us to accomplish many things. At this time, we're honored to have Dr. Yvette Morgan to come and pay tribute by the reading of the eulogy to represent that dash. Dr. Yvette Morgan. He's still testing me. That's my big bro. One year separate us. That's it, just a year. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. There's been a permeating message today about who Peter was and love seemed to ring out throughout everyone's who he was. But like it was mentioned by my sister Kathy, Peter had multiple personalities. There was Peter, there was Pita, there was Japanese, there was the Black Viking, and for me, there was Pets and I was his bete. Those were the names we gave each other. Where I come from far. I remember the one vivid experience that I had when we all graduated, Grumps, Sandra, Japese, when we graduated from Springfield Central High School and came to New York. And I used to sit and braid that thick hair before Medro Deluxe, he had his natural hair. And I took such honor in being the sister who would sit and part and braid. And with every braid, I touched that stage back in Sun, Sunsplash as a backup dancer, as a chipette, Mary Taliba. I don't know what I'm talking about. And I came to a fork or whether I was going to pursue my education. And one of the things he always told me was, sis, if I never tell you before, the fly can't pitch upon you, I'm going to kill it. And so much in it love me. And always reminded me to live the life I love and love the life I live. And don't ever forget to be that beacon of light. Never waver. And stop worrying what people are saying about you. No worry about that. Because people have always talk. Because enough BMW all day. But you know what BMW was with Jeff Eats? Bad mind and wicked. That's what he said. And I don't want some man to come off of the stage. So I have to share this experience. When, my fa when our father was ready to go through his transition, it was me and Jeff Eats in a Lazarus. Me, 
whether him sit down upon a emo lounge chair or him like the floor. He must lay down upon the floor and cock up him foot and have him pillow and have him look up screen and watching historical videos. And that's when me and Jack Pete say, yo, what man? What's your problem with me? Why we don't vibe the way we used to vibe? And we aired it out. And from that moment, we made the commitment to each other to never let go. And over the last two years, Over the last two years, may I go be the first to say, I became the biggest groupie, all right? Period, as the children would say. And wherever that Peter say, yo, Salah, y'all come. Yes, Japits, may I come? My daddy, your flight book, y'all come. Yes, Japits. And it was at Sunsplash this year when Peter was performing and he came to the side of the stage and he just started doing the two-step and we was just rocking together. It's like, yeah, that's my guy. And he said, that's my girl. We had a brother-sister love that was unbreakable despite the many years of separation. So I say that to us as a family, every single one of us here, find back that childhood love. Find back that. Because you know what? That's where the innocence, where daddy always used to talk on. That's where the innocence was. And we can achieve that as adults. If we want it bad enough. It has to be a two-way street. Like Peter, the lyrics. When me did start really love my brother when him sing Boss Up Barriers. When Peter did never afraid to talk true to the music. He used his platform like he was the Fred Hampton of reggae music. He wasn't afraid. And sometimes he said, yo, Japis, be careful, you know. I know I hear them, them lyrics that Salah wanted to talk to it. And he never, ever wavered from send us your love, Oja, your mercy and your grace. What we need is love to help us grow. Love is the only solution that can stop our resolution. Who was never afraid to even show that vulnerable side like she's still loving me. And it's love. And I always say, I want love I and I deal with. I have faith in you. You have faith in me. Our love and care, our unity makes us all one family. Let's not mourn, but celebrate the great Peter. And for all these years, me realize, say, yo, me, I call the man God Peter. And me say, Jack eats. So when I say, long live, you say, Jack eats. Are you with me? Long live. Long live. Long live. Long live. Long live. I and I, Rastafari, I. Oh wow, there's only one question I'd like to ask the mom. Do you ever count the dumplings when you are frying them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of picnics you have, you know, ma. Man, I tell you. Thank you so much, my dear sister, for that awesome tribute to your brother. And at this time, we're, we're gonna be graced with the children, Peter, Peter. Morgan's children is gonna grace us now with a poem. Come on, children.
Thank you all for being here today. Heaven is a state of mind, a state of spirit. And once we are connected to the spirit, whom or what shall we fear? There is no such thing as the end of a life, only more life to be lived. These are the teachings our father instilled in us. As children, it was too heavy of a proverb for us to hold near, but come to find out that same proverb was later a seed to be watered by our tears, weeding out our fears and sprouting from the dirt, our own tree of life, a new meaning of life. Yo. For my father ascended, all he asked for was to see his, all, all his children. And I saw the joy in his eyes as, he, as we all told him we love him. I saw the pure joy in his eye. All them times we got to sing and dance. True to your soul. All the flash and the cans, all the jewels and name brands, my father didn't care for none of that. That's a spiritual man. What mattered to him was a connection, a spiritual connection. Enjoying the moment, enjoying the life created by the most high job. Um, a lot of great people that came up here and talked about um, the man that they knew as our father. And they were right. He did have a lot of different personalities. I remember always looking forward to the weekends that would be making up, making cornmeal porridge for us and sending us to public so we could go get the French bread. Can't forget that French bread. He'd be smiling ear to ear as we all just sat together and enjoyed because that's all he wanted. He taught us to appreciate the little thing, appreciate family. It's crazy to me how someone who solidified himself as a worldwide rocker could be the same person who would just love to sit on the couch watching superhero movies and stuff. <laughs> Even in the softest moments, we could all see the lion within him. He showed us how to live. It's beautiful how we all learn to love from a distance. With him traveling the road, speaking his beautiful message to the world. And us as his children, going out into the world to forge our own paths. We would always find ourselves together again. It was tough at times. But love transcends all things. We cannot forget that. His love, Dad, your love, is and always will be unconditional. Being around my dad and having the chance to learn him beyond his artistry gave me the chance to truly understand and appreciate him more. I came to realize that my dad was not only an incredibly talented human, but he was charming, humble, full of life and so much love. He had a hilarious sense of humor and I see now where my siblings and I get that from. He was supportive and very proud of me and he made sure that I knew that. I'll miss you, Dad. Your jokes, your infectious laugh and bright smile, your velvet voice and super dramatic personality. I'm so honored to be your daughter. I will continue making you proud. I will keep my siblings close and I will be okay. You did good and your spirit will live on forever.
Our father was a beautiful man, inside and out. He was a family man, and a loving dad with a, with a big heart. Daddy, I want to thank you for always being supportive of each of us and all our goals. No question, you encouraged us to do what we love, no matter how risky our choices seemed. And I will forever cherish the bond we shared. I'll forever be grateful for the years we spent together. And I'll always remember the memories you've made with all of, all of us. We'd like to take this time to invite our cousin, Anaya, and our bonus brother and sister, Talia and Jalen, to join us. Uncle Peter, being raised by you was a privilege. You were the best father figure to Anaya, Janaya, Jalen, and I. I'm reminded of how lucky I am to have been raised by such an incredible man. From FaceTiming every single day, grabbing dinner, having conversations from politics to pop culture. Dad wasn't always in town, but he always made sure to be present in our lives. I am eternally grateful for the time I spent with him. As many of you know, <sighs> Uncle Peter has raised me since I was six years old. I would come to him for any and everything, keeping him on the phone for hours, talking his ear off. That's how I got my, my nickname, Abla. <laughs> that is one of the many things we have in common. We, bo we both love to talk. So I will carry on your legacy and talk everyone's ears off, keeping them smiling and laughing just as you did me. I'm grateful for all of the music and beautiful memories I get to share with your grandsons, Elijah and Zaire. They will not only know your music, but the incredible father and man you were. Your legacy shall live on. Javi praise. <laughs> Janaya, Anaya's twin sister, could not be with us today because she is proudly serving this country. But in true Janaya fashion, she left us a few words to share about her uncle Peter. Hi everybody, I'm making this video because I wasn't able to be there today, but I wanted to say a few things, so just pretend if I was. I love Uncle Peter. He was the greatest uncle I could ever ask for. He made me smile. He made the best food, hands down, in the house. I always had a father figure in my life. And Uncle Peter was one of those father figures in my life. I had someone that that I could talk to and that I treated me like one of his own. I love and I care for every one of you. So I hope this service brings warmth and happiness into your hearts. Um, I love you guys and thank you for hearing me. In closing, Peter Morgan was not just the velvet voice. He was a devout husband. He was an amazing brother. And he was a father to every single one of us. <laughs> wherever our roads may lead, wherever we go from this point forward, we will always be connected and share some of the best childhood memories with our dad, Peter Anthony Morgan, being the head of this beautifully blended family we are. We love you, Dad.
Then Roy Morgan Sr. said um, in an interview that each time his children became pregnant, he would say, congratulations. And each time somebody sneezed, he said, bless you. And I could just hear him saying, my foot off right up. But time with great honor. Where is Miss Yuna? Where is Yuna? Sister Yuna Morgan. Come on here, my friend. Come here, my darling. What a legacy. It's really a legacy from Morgan Heritage. Rich legacy. Oh, she's here. Come on, sweetheart. All right. Good evening. Um, Tommy, I'm going to be strong. Salaji, I'm going to be strong. I just want to say thank all of you. Thank all of you. from the bottom of my heart. The journey from Morgan Heritage has been one that has been long, has it had its ups and downs, went through transformation, went through questions from the public, why, why? My brother Junior, the first drummer from Morgan Heritage gave him a a bit of the, the beginning of the group. There was eight of us. And actually, I wasn't the only girl. There was three girls in our Morgan heritage. My sister Janet was sitting right there, so I'm a sister Takilat that is here. My sister Janet had other dreams, other, other, her destiny was set in a different way. I give God tongues, and now she's one of the executives at uh, Emory Hospital in Atlanta. Give a big hand for Mrs. Sunday. <laughs> My sister Takilat is also now a, a big wig working in the, 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 the work of social work. She's in the social work uh, uh, industry, excuse me for lack of a better term. But I thank them because um, starting out with Morgan Heritage was, it was tumultuous. But Daddy, our father, the Honorable Ross Bishop Denmark Morgan, believed. And as the group transformed and we went through, you know, JP, which is my name for him, because back in the day, like my brother, I didn't know. He was the dancer. He would give Chris. But Japi, as the lead and as the, the head of the arrow that the Lord anointed, will be missed. He gave each one of us laughter. He gave each one of us strength to believe in ourselves. He believed in love. I listened to all the friends that touched, that were touched by his presence, by his leadership, by his guidance, by his beautiful eyes. Thank you all. Sharon Burke, Kathy Goodall, Shane Brown, Horace Riley, who is in the house with us. Thank you so much. Judith Bodley. To my mother, who has stood by us from day one. It wasn't easy. It's awesome tour she come and we and we have cook. She and my brother Laza from LMS set up a cook rice and teas and tea in the dressing room food. So the journey, Buju Bantan say, is not an easy road. Them city glamour and the glitter and think it's a bed of roses. And it has not been. My journey as the sister during this time of Morgan heritage has been one that I would take with me forever. 
My brother JP always said to me, Mommy, firm up yourself, man. <laughs> so, I firm up myself. And I'm going to be strong. <laughs> because people always tell me that they're strong. I'm not worried. Here we judge up. I'm saying, Mommy, Grandpa, Mojo, Luke's no worry because God did me with the right us hand when the just seed is planted in I and I. He's the root and the source of our lives. We are the branches, the trees that have life. We are the apple of his eyes forever for life. Thank you all again from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for my brother Peter. Love, enough, and respect going out to this family for perseverance and resilience to create a dynasty that we can all share in it. At this time, Luke, Morgan, come forth, my brother. Hardest day in my life. Chappy. Everything ever. Chappy is a perfectionist. Um. When we're born, it's a gift. And how we live a life is our gift back to God. And I can tell you that my brother lived 1,000% doing what he wants, but in love and want. And I'm very proud of him. He never itch when he get him calling. We grew up as a family. And my father put enough pressure upon him. You are the leader. You are the vice. And it's a lot of pressure to be able to write the songs he write, sing the way he sing. And I'm just thankful that I was able to share it with the rest of our siblings where everybody would come to know Morgan Heritage. Started off with the oldest bread on us here at Junior. Eight away. And then come down to five away. And, you know, Peter Graham Sam Mojo, you know, um, still carrying on, even though you and you and I are still there, but this is the hardest, hardest, hardest thing to do. Daddy would always say to him, say to him, when there's a spear, and Peter is the point of the spear. Oh, we have to know. <laughs> but Jappy, you don't greet me, brother. Your work will live on. <laughs> we 
it's like a part of it gone. And we had a dinosaur, it now come back. Now come back. This is a nephew. I vow for my brother to be the best uncle I ever have here. I am just a phone call away. And everybody here, this perfectionist when we are at school. Daddy and Nima used to give away lunch money. Everybody make sure they get fit and lunch. Peter, see a theme by CD at the end of the week. <laughs> Every week, Peter would buy a new CD. That's all serious in taking craft. We would be on stage for farming and Mojo and Grams would always tell him, Brother, you can't make up your face up on stage. He might go turn on and cuss and we have said, yo, bitch, you can't do that. And he must say, eat no right. And your best be, you know, for one of them night, they will call you out in front of toes and say, yo, fix up. You know, but that's Jappy. You know, and take it. He's a perfectionist. And he's done great. You know what I mean? In tech, the call and see us. Be the voice of the voices crying out. Be the voice for the voiceless. And him never, as Salah said, him never afraid to talk the truth. Dreadlocks are now live Rasta life. And him take it serious. And His Majesty, top soldier, me can say that. Can His Majesty teach him on the world? But I treat him them so sure in a life. You have a ban, you have to pay a tax. And your time I got come. We just don't know the day and the time. But we give thanks to everybody. Share the love with my brother. Our leader. And we have to carry on. Yeah? yeah. We have to carry on. And that's what he wants. And again, I'm just thankful to share his life with him. A special human being, special. And it's hard, it's hard, hard, hard. This one, yeah. It's like nothing we've ever felt before. Nothing we've ever dealt with before, you know? But we can't fly up in our God face. Because me angry. Why, Peter? Why? You can't question it in doing work. I mean, I go be angry with God. Because I'm unsigned calling. And who is me if he said it is just the love for our theme? We appreciate that emotion because we love Peter. We love Peter. But we're not going to question it. He just questions it. Why? Why? But we give thanks. We give thanks for the life that Jappy has lived and be able to share it. His life, and he wasn't selfish, a very selfless man, to share life with so much of us.
kazi neva afto. Nkuda sebo haja da wande tu tu rocky for me you know. Na touch da wande. Don't say no ja. You call me. I'll do your work. And in do it. I'm proud with my partners. Mojo. Gramps. Luna. We did great. We win many awards. We win, you know. But one thing we sure. Jappy proud of saying unsigned calling of his majesty. And in do your work. And you can't ask no. Thank you, Lutz Morgan. We have a saying in Jamaica that says that the, them said donkey said the ground no level. Things are never straight. We don't get to do we don't get good things all the time. But there's a person who sees the good in all of us, and he says that there's a place in heaven for people like us who persevere. There's no one that sings this better or say it better to, to us more than Grams Morgan right now. Mr. Morgan. There's a place in heaven for people like him, really. Good evening, everyone. Well, go on. Try to keep this short. And I'm going to try in a ball either. First grade, you have an Afro big like this. We went to school that morning in 16 acres, Springfield, Massachusetts. Oh, Peter and up be my little bridging in the family, the family big. But in our family, everybody have them little best friend and them little pockets, you know. A dirty picnic and enough picnic. And I went to 16 acres that morning. The year before I was in the first grade. First grade. Guess what? The second year, I was in the first grade. Hey, what do you want me to do? I end up, me and Peter now end up here. And I had to take him to the first grade, to his class. I'll never forget that. Taking him to the first grade. But most of all, it was a Rasta man. He was a very spiritual man. Most of you guys know him as a great artist because he was incredible as an artist. I called him the GOAT. And I've sung with some of the greatest and tour with the best. And I said, Peter, you're not normal. You know? This man would, an hour before we go on stage, drink the coldest drink. I said, Peter, where you are doing? I'm coming on the stage and go, I say, same thing with Laza. When we were promoting Morgan Heritage Family and Friends album, Laza would be sleeping right before his part on the side of the stage. And when Laza come and start, they never are going to get V in. It's on YouTube. I'll leave that for another time. Love you. And the greatness of this man was when they loved the most time, they loved God. One morning, let me tell you, Peter get up on Bristol Street in Springfield, Massachusetts. It's a big up all of my friend I'm from Springfield. And 
when Peter get up, Peter, one man, he was scared and everybody come from downstairs and he said, what happened to you? And my father come out of the room and my mother come out of the room, Emma, and I don't even know if they even remember, I don't know if Emma remember this. And he said, me see his majesty in a dream. For every Rastafarian, that is a dream come true. <laughs> so when Peter saw his majesty, he was in like a temper. He was like shaking. His eyes was red and his beard was white. Pretty. And I said, go and tell the world about me. That was Peter, the man. And from that day, we never stop search until we reach a Jamaica. I try going to the short version. And Peter said, Daddy, we have to get baptized. I said, Baptized? And with their bloom, I was saying, Thomas, saying, Thomas, big up on yourself. And my father said, What do you mean? He said, We have to get baptized. I'm just show you where Peter meant to the family and my father. He was always searching. We always had to grow spiritually. Upgrade your spirituality. You upgrade your clothes, your makeup, everything, but we don't upgrade with spirituality. Knowledge is vast and wide. Never stop reaching out. I implore you, all of you, clothe in yourself in the light of Christ. When Peter said, Daddy, we have to get baptized, we went and found the Ethiopian and Orthodox Tawahedo Church. And that's why we love his majesty. That's why when we say, Ja! I don't have time to tell you the whole thing, but Rastafari was known as Rastafari Makonen, born in 1892, July 23rd. Give thanks for the teachings of the 12 tribe of Israel. And from that day, Peter kept on feeding us, feeding us, feeding us spiritually. I said, Peter, which book that? I'll never forget when Buju Bantan come to New York and said, Buju, we find a book. Buju said, which book that? If you don't know about you. And him say, one book named the Kebra and Agas. I saw it in the reader do a song named Give it the Kebra, make we read it and gain the knowledge of the truth and feed who come to eat it. Peter fed the world through music, through him lyrics. I saw it in the put an album named More Teachings. And that album is like a book itself. But he kept growing, he wanted to show his diversity. And I said, But wait, we don't love woman too. And bury someone look power and say, Wow, Mona I said, Mr. Linton come and say, Never read him enough. And who the will create a song say, She's still loving me. And I'll never forget the man in him come on my house. I mean, it get natural, trouble. If you know, I know what this song is right, but... And he said, Grams, how you for do that? And he just come with the guitar, run on my house, I play so me and mommy and Luke and Mojo and I live together, four away. As big people, you can imagine. And he just start playing guitar. To boy up on the side, on the beach. And we write in songs. It was a thing in a St. Thomas that really grounded us. Because we came from Brooklyn. So when we went to Jamaica, people couldn't believe, say, why? America didn't buy it because we chat Papa so bad. <laughs> and me have some cousin, by the way, where some of them never got Jamaica yet at the time. Where them chat, when them talk, you can't even understand them. 
Auntie Gracie, my cousin them, Auntie Gracie, Auntie Lana, big up on herself and I look at my cousin them ranking. When you hear ranking talk, no embody is a bad rapper now and known as Opium Black. But our family roots is so deep, all the way from the roots of Clarendon. And I want to acknowledge my mother because she stand up with my father, you know. There's too many broken homes, people. My mother stood up with my father from my 16 in today's modern terms. So I don't want to call my father Gallis. But he wasn't that. But when we see a woman stand up with a man through all the trials and pain. It's not normal. I always tell my friends, and I love pop culture. I wear designer too sometimes, but the message in the music needs to come back. Beyonce always I put out some songs. I'm, I can't wait to see her again. Maybe see her on the plane at the Special Olympics. But more I see her because the songs is, is, is we push to break up relationships and break up families so much. I'm so happy that the man that I've become and grown, I'm not the man that, the man that I am today, I wasn't that man. It took time and maturity. Men, we take long to get it right. And I just remember listening to a song where Beyonce said, to the left, to the left. She said, I can have another you in a minute. Well, I know, matter of fact, he'll be here in a minute. My mother never do that. She grew up on songs like Stand By Your Man. <laughs> and that's not normal. So I'm poor woman. Don't be so fast with breakup. My brother, seven children come up there. Flowers, a garden, all the colors are different. Isn't it beautiful? So I want to know that a nation is mourning, not only the Morgan family. Peter was dynamic. I remember when we were, I want to take this time to acknowledge the original members and Sharon Burke, thank you for making us get on that stage in reggae sun splashing my I'm a father, take all my money and say, it was like a Joe Jackson story. <laughs> we annoyed our mother so much time, me and Peter are singing at the back stairs by the third floor. And there were so many people that took chances on us. Eugene Gray, Thelonious Monk Jr., Bobby Digital, King Jammies, the names are too much to name. And it, it's like when you think of Peter, you think of a priest and a prophet, that sometimes a priest and a prophet is never honored in his own house. And I want you to know and understand that Peter was one of those persons that brought clarity to Rastafari. A lot of times in the 60s and 70s, Amanda said, Rasta, I just Rasta. You know? But Peter was like, wait a minute, where's the data? What does it really mean? Let me declare to you the divinity of his imperial majesty, Emperor Ailes Selassie. The Rastafarian movement is not a religion. It is a liberation movement that make you think about uplifting yourself again taking care of your body, taking care of your temple with a spiritual nucleus. That spiritual nucleus, let me say again, that spiritual nucleus is based in Ethiopia by the Christian faith. So that's why we sing songs like, you know, I feel to be Rasta, and there's a way no party and curry goat and all bully beef. <laughs> bully beef and white. 
righteousness, when the Rasta part came to us, we realized that, man, there's some bad stuff in there. <laughs> so no better tank Rasta. Tank Jamaica, tank the culture. So Peter was that guy that always dig, always at dig, spiritually. And he wanted the truth. You can't say Rasta Rasta. That's why I may not smoke ganja till this day. Peter never smoked ganja. And don't think talk about alcohol. If you come close and I drink alcohol to him, say, what that? He was that guy. I wish we could all have a barbecue with him together. So no could I really get to know him, you know? When I did the first one, I was afraid. I'm going to say, what was in the first verse? And I'm going to rise up, man. We are grand, so I do it. We were hard on ourselves musically. I remember my brother, Junior, Clifford Branch, was so hard upon you in a rehearsal. People, we used to rehearse 16 hours a day and had a hot sun in a Brooklyn. The Rhea was there for Camille, Taliba, the Chippets, Salah, Miriam, out of that come LMS. We were so hard. Junior, I'll never forget when Cliff was. Not only the vibration, but the musicianship that blessed the school, Edna Manley of music. Because a lot of those kids studied Morgan Eric. Um, saxophone player, you heard him play earlier on the piano. You saw music. pastor and him say he heard my father talking on an album named Live in Europe do it he said follow those people they know what they're talking about we don't talk because we clothed ourselves in Christ by the way of his imperial majesty emperor last and first that is the true teachings of his majesty I remember the memories of the work that we put in. My brother David Morgan, him love his majesty so much. The man moved to Ethiopia never to come back. And guess what? He now have on dreadlocks. He was the original bass player of Morgan Heritage. Our brother Jeffrey Morgan come from Olaba, not knowing a lick of English, not knowing how to play any instrument, but he was one of my father's sons. And he learned how to play the lead guitar to we call him Jimi Hendrix. This is the history, people. And my brother Junior, Denry Morgan Junior, was the drummer. And trust me, I remember the stress and the headache and the lack of focus when we were sitting out on the front stairs waiting for our father to come. And Daddy said, only now I can practice. Uh, we said, Daddy gone to a meeting, a man and I'm going to meet with the MCA. So see, we are outside, I wait for say, Daddy, we get signed. When him come out and reach out, I can So look, go inside for practice. <laughs> this is who we are. This is who the Morgan family is. It was that kind of regiment. 1992 was a journey. The touring musicians, I can't remember them all, but Neville Moulton, Khan Mitchum Chin, Andre Bailey, we couldn't have toured the world without these music. The engineers, Shane Brown, thank you. Thank you for taking a chance with us, brother. Because
it's been a journey to step out from my keyboard. And I remember when we went on tour together and we miss my brother. It was a lot of pressure. They went to in the area and John Legend and I watched them and I said, my God, how am I going to manage this thing? And only Peter can match this thing. You know? And Peter said, it's holy man, it can do it. And then after that tour, I was on tour with Bujo and I thought I was doing well. Bujo was in, we was in Virginia and we come off at the stage. Too stiff, man. I verse. Same thing with you. When I waiting for a verse, Mojo waiting for his rap, because he was the point of our act. And let me tell you, you know what got me after this, you know. One ninety two coming up, we called him the animal. Correct, sir. And then we met Thelonious Monk. Important loving the children, these children make a lot of sacrifices too. And we go up on tour and size that we make to build a career. It's not easy. Wives, girlfriends, and baby mothers, take it easy upon these musician artists, please. 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 Because it's not easy. We go out there to sacrifice and establish our culture, our genre and our country, Jamaica. I want to say special notice to be the face that made us do our first dub play. Because just for me, you know, we never know what dub play we still him come be the face show up how we are at Carnegie Street. I say, you know, some dub play was like, what is a dub play? Be the face until he took out $600. And said, 300 and dub. I said, they're The sound system culture. See? of Morgan heritage, carry on the legacy of my brother, Peter Morgan and the Morgan family. We have a lot more coming. We're gonna carry on. He all the way in China and he's doing an amazing job. Morgan heritage don't even reach yet. So the legacy continues. And last but not least, Tommy, wherever you're there, thank you. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you. That stood in the same way. She reminded me so much of my mother, you know. You know, you to find a good woman. All of my artist friends, them in the buckle down, you know. Got life short. Buckle down, find one that is worthy. But Tommy, be strong. And I know you have to stand up strong and do the right thing and carry on with better legacy. I want to close by reading
a message. He got stuck in Ghana. This message is for my family. Mama used to say, when one member of the body hurt, touched us all with his genuine love. From he was a little child, he blessed us with a gift of music. He took the role of leadership from a very early age and he never let us down. We have been blessed with the presence of his pure soul. Let us Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, that's a family. Oh boy. That's a family. Strong family. Big family. No up. Big up yourself. All right. Yellow man said, when is there's a beginning, there must be an end. If there's a rooster, there must be a hen. And without this, for this event to have been the celebration that it turned out to be to celebrate the life of Peter Morgan. We needed some baking powder, some baking soda, some eggs. If we bake need the main ingredient. So at this time, the heart behind tonight this evening with great honor and with humbleness. Please welcome Mr. Mojo Morgan. So we follow the divine spirit. Speaking of <sighs> such a selfless person. This man was a very serious man. Um, you can't say the things that you say. Me smoke ganja, Grams and Peter don't. And appreciate the love and support. He was probably the most selfless person I've ever known thus far in my life and probably will never meet one like that again. Um, there's not much more to be said. I really would like to just say thank you to people that have extended love and support for this gathering.
king he is. People like the Manu family, Peter Daly, the commission. brought the house down right commissioner hill was awesome um, catherine you did it christy the official sixth member of morgan heritage you know, VOG going to be upset with you for that one. Um, Pastor Raw, thank you. You did very beautiful tonight. I know you're going to lead us out in prayer before we head on out here and, and go enjoy the rest of the evening in remembrance. I want you all to remember this. not going to remember Peter in morning. Let's pay tribute to him. The glory that he is getting in the afterlife. He said, enough soldiers rise and enough soldiers fall. And when they fall, the name is written on the wall. So we remember the cause that they fall for. But in death, there's no reward. Some will cry for a time. But life goes on and them have to dry their mind. But I and I will continue with the struggle in this life and give thanks every man in your open eyes. Because to rise and fall, but in this life, our brother Peter lived for the cause. And we've seen the world help us to make his name be remembered for I. So don't ever let them break your stride. Don't. Do your work and be as your own. And uncles, we're here for you. Lord Tommy, I won't even go into the. We're grateful for the role you played in our brother's life, and you gave us all a chance to say. by that days to make sure that we stop with his body not being here anymore in this realm.
St. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 6 says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Him. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to Jah except through me. Give rest, O Jah, to your servant. We are mortal, formed of the earth, and the earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when we created man, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Last heart, receive him into your arms of your mercy, into your blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints of love and light. Amen. Will you all please stand right now? And please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, I'm of deep sorrow. We are grateful for the precious moments and the lasting memories that we shared with Peter Anthony Morgan because he has touched our lives in countless ways. Ja, wrap this family and all who mourn in your loving arms. Grant them the strength to face the coming days with Encourage. May Landing help them to navigate the journey. Path forward as we bid fear our actions and memories. Inspire us to live with kindness, to love deeply and cherish each moment as a precious gift. In your loving name we pray, amen. At this time, just touch someone beside you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make This concludes, I would like the, are they here? Huh? 
Wow. Just for me. Oh, this is a good time. This is a Great moment. To see him very soon, right? And what a joyous moment that will be. He said, the more we are together, the what? The more we are together, the more we are what? Yeah, man. Rest in love, Uncle Peter. We love you. One more time from the Morgan family again. The more we are together, the happier we shall be. Say the more we are together. Because my love is your love We said the more we are to get Please, could you? I'm at
please. Please. Zion gets out. 